Hi everybody. So, one of the most fascinating areas of study in the field of robotics, mechanics and material science has got to be artificial muscles. Artificial muscles mimic the flexibility, strength and adaptability of natural muscles. They're synthetic structures that have revolutionised a variety of industries and they promise advancements in prosthetics, soft robotics and energy capture. You could say that at the core, artificial muscles aim to replicate the fundamental function of biological muscles. That is, they're designed to contract, expand or change shape in response to external stimuli, much in the same way as our own muscles react to electrical impulses from our nervous system. And the ability to convert energy into mechanical motion is part of what enables a wide array of applications. And of course, if it goes one way, it can go the other way. We can turn mechanical motion into electrical energy. There are, of course, several different types, and perhaps one of the most promising types is the electroactive polymers. These materials respond to electrical stimulation by changing size or shape. For instance, one type of EAP, known as a dielectric elastomere, expands and contracts when an electric field is applied, resembling the behaviour of a natural muscle. Another type, called conducting polymers, exhibits similar properties, allowing for controlled movements in response to electrical signals. Another class of artificial muscle is based on shape memory alloys, or SMAs. These materials, for example nitinol, can return to a predefined shape when subject to heat or electrical stimulation and they enable precise and repeatable movements. SMAs have been used to build engines and these engines have been actually quite powerful. Of course these artificial muscles offer a range of advantages. Their lightweight nature, their flexibility, their ability to produce controlled movement, well that makes them ideal for applications in robotics. Soft robotics in particular benefit significantly from these artificial muscles, allowing for the creation of robots that can interact safely with people and adapt to complex environments. In the realm of prosthetics, artificial muscles hold immense promise. They offer the potential to create more natural and responsive prosthetic limbs providing greater mobility and functionality to amputees. By replicating the nuanced motions and adaptability of natural muscles, these advancements aim to improve the quality of life for individuals with limb loss. Furthermore, they're making strides in augmenting human capabilities with exoskeletons equipped with these muscles that can assist individuals in performing physically demanding tasks. And of course, that aids rehabilitation or enhancing strength for various professions. Despite their immense potential, challenges remain in perfecting artificial muscles. Achieving the delicate balance between strength, durability and responsiveness poses ongoing engineering hurdles. Issues such as power consumption, scalability and biocompatibility in medical applications without a doubt require further research and development. Moreover, the field of artificial muscles continues to evolve with researchers exploring new materials and new mechanisms to enhance their performance. With concepts like pneumatic artificial muscles which use compressed air forced into a bladder to create motion and hybrid approaches combining different materials showcase the breadth of innovation in this field. Now at first sight you might think artificial muscles with their complexity and rare materials are well out of the scope of the average researcher who's working from home but far from it Artificial muscles are in fact stunningly easy to make from common everyday materials like fishnet, balloons and nylon. And on the channel we've made artificial muscles from orange bags and balloons which are McKibben muscles and super cold muscles from twisting, fishing line or strimmer wire. So have a look at this, it's a diamond. Now notice this. Isn't that awesome? You'll have seen something like that in things like wind racks and clothes horses, where you can set them up. The thing to notice is that this point and this point, as I do that, get nearer to each other. They contract. That's very cool. Now imagine we had lots of little ones of these that we could do that to. We might be able to make an artificial muscle. How handy that these things are exactly that. I mean, these are the bags that stuff uh, like 
fruit and veg comes in that needs to get air. You can't put it in a plastic bag because it basically rot. And so things like garlic, uh, things like satsumas and tangerines, love these at Christmas, are in one of these net bags. And if you look closely at that net bag, you'll see it's basically a whole load of these. So if we can stick something in there to pull those apart, what should happen is those two points should close up and we should get an artificial muscle. And we can do that quite simply by sticking a balloon in there. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put a balloon in a net bag. How exciting is that? <laughs> so here's my balloon. This is a straight through hose connector. Stick the hose connector in the balloon and bung some of this tape around it. When you've done that, grab your satsuma bag and notice the pretty little diamond patterns and then stuff the balloon in the satsuma bag and again, tape around it. There you go, what you end up with is a balloon taped inside a satsuma bag, which I'm quite willing to admit may not appear to most people as cool as I think it is. But the last thing to do is take a couple of cable ties and zip around there with them. Okay, there it is, set up on a stand, and I've put a 1.25 kilo weight on it, and here I've got a bit of hose with a hose clip. <laughs> Watch what happens to that weight. We're able to lift the weight. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Now this is called a McKibben type pneumatic muscle. Normally when you see them, they use this stuff, which is cable braid, and stick a bit of silicon pipe in there, and it takes quite a lot of pressure to actually get that to move. But obviously the balloon in a Satsuma bag, you can do it with your lungs. And I'm lifting this 1.25 kilo weight just with my breath. Now the way it works is just like this. That bag is made up of loads and loads of little ones of these. As the balloon fills, it stretches them that way, and of course it's pulling these two together, which is what lifts the weight, and it's able to lift the weight because it's like loads of them on there. This is a bit of nylon strimmer line. You can use nylon fishing line as well, but nylon works really, really well. And all you do is twist it up until it supercoils. Now I'll show you what I mean by that by actually doing it. <coughs> Okay, so I've got my stribble line and I've just fixed one end. I've put it into a bench vise, but you just fix one end and put the other end into a drill. Now, if you're using fishing line and it's a bit small, then put a hook in your drill and tie your fishing line onto the hook. And then all you do, give it a bit of tension and start to spin it. As you spin it, it begins to twist up. When it's twisted the most it can, it'll lay another twist over that twist, and that's the supercoil. So I'm going to twist it until it gets to that point, and then give you a view of that. So here it is, there's the coil started, and you can see here's the twisted line, and as I continue to spin that, that coil will grow outwards, and that is the supercoil where it is a coil on a coil. Now when we let that go, it will unspring, but it will retain its coil-like shape. And there we go. One super coil, or if you like, artificial muscle. That's how artificial muscles are made. And we'll make one of those to go on our energy collector. Okay, so to test this little setup, what we've got is the um, unit hanging off the edge of the table, and there's our artificial muscle right there. Got it on the multimeter, multimeter's reading milliamps, and here what we've got is a small perspex tube, and I'm going to drop this tiny ball bearing down the tube. Now obviously we won't get a lot of amps out of that, but we will get something. And then we'll remove the bridge, actually we'll probably do the bridge without the bridge first because the vibration may affect that cone and we want to see the difference that the artificial muscle makes. So we'll take out the bridge and we'll try the test without the bridge, which will mean that it's just the cone that is vibrating. OK, so first without the bridge.
and quite a lot of nothing. And now with the bridge. <laughs> and quite a response. Incidentally, you'll notice uh, when I hit the... Look at that. Anyway. Do you think that's pretty cool? Uh, I mean, to admit, it wasn't a lot of power, but then we're dropping this little ball bearing through, and that probably weighs, I don't know, a couple of grams. Then we're dropping it down that length. So if we weighed that and count, add that weight, we could calculate what kinetic energy was being transferred, incidentally, and work out the efficiency that it's picking up the vibrations, if we wished to. Now, it doesn't actually work in the wind. We, we tried this, uh, remember, with the strings in the Aeolian harp as a wind generator. It worked great. Uh, when we do this to it, there's no real benefit. It doesn't do much. But uh, in terms of picking up the vibrations around it, actually, it's astounding. I mean, that it got anything at all from this tiny ball bearing is amazing, to be honest. Uh, and what's really cool about it is it's a piece of nylon string that has been wound up into a coil. It's not the most expensive piece of equipment you're ever going to um, want to build. Now, vibration energy harvesters are a hot topic. There's a, a whole corridor in Heathrow that uses these things to light the corridor from the footfall of the passengers. If we stuck these things on bridges, there's enough energy in the traffic crossing that bridge to light the bridge. So there's a lot of available energy that can be harvested from vibrational energy if we had cheap vibration energy um, harvesters. And this looks to me like it's a real way to go for cheap vibration uh, energy harvesting. And that's what struck me as so cool about it. Now we tested it with and without the cone to see what kind of contribution it would make. If that cone had been on the bench and we tapped it, yeah, sure, it would have made a contribution. But we saw that it made absolutely no contribution at all. But when we put the artificial muscle on, that artificial muscle vibration transferred to the cone is what was picking up the energy. So this artificial muscle, very simple thing to make. You, you do have to be a little careful. Don't go at it really quickly. You can spin it up quite quickly at first, but as it begins its super coiling, spin it quite slowly or it'll just snap. And that is the voice of experience. Anyway, this was, like I say, a development of an idea Jason shared with me, and I thought it was really awesome, which is why I've, I've done this video. But there's also another thing here, that this is what invention is about. Uh, uh, what I did was the Aeolian harp. Jason had a look at it, had a think about it, made a suggestion, we practically tried that suggestion, and hey-ho, we came up with the whole new invention. And maybe this invention already exists, it doesn't really matter. We came up with that invention by thinking about things and working together and building something. And that's how I think invention happens. So there's also that to take away. Not only have we created something that is a cheap vibration energy harvester with great potential, we've also used the stuff that I've been banging on about in those discussion videos to actually invent something new. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.